Today on Scott True Builds, a spec home tour. It's a Saturday and I am visiting a spec home after the guys had a half day. And I thought this might be a good time to do a spec home tour. So let's get into it. First, let me put some things into perspective. So this home is a basic spec home. So the details are gonna be obviously basic. On a custom home, we're gonna be going above and beyond using a little bit better products, a little bit better methods. On my personal home, I'm kind of in the middle middle of that there's some things that are above and beyond and some things that are still very basic I'm going to talk more about that in the future and tell you exactly how I made those decisions but for this video just keep in mind that this is a basic spec home so everything is basic our standard for framing is advanced framing open corners laterally braced headers these headers are big because they've got beams on them here's a more typical header usually for a three foot window it's a two ply two by six pushed to the outside so we insulate the inside again the studs are two by six 24 inch on center this is what i call basic advanced framing it's just a style of framing where we are minimizing thermal bridging usually with uh, advanced framing we are stacking things up so you'll see here that in most places the studs are lining up with the rafters and ceiling joists. So usually the ceiling joists will fall next to the rafters. It's kind of hard to see when you've got windows that kind of throws, throws the pattern off, but let's find a spot. Here's kind of a spot where you can see that happening. There are some spots where it gets a little bit off. If it, if it ever gets too far off, we're gonna throw an extra stud in there, but I'll throw it on the flat so we're not creating another uh, thermal bridge. But that's why I said, for the most part, everything's lining up. When it's a two-story home, I am a little bit more picky and really make sure that those things line up. Also on a two-story home, when there's floor joists, those floor joists are also lining up with everything. Let me just quickly show you what's going on on the outside. Um, up there, you'll see on the fascia that SIGA tape, that's part of my tight soffit detail. I'm gonna make a whole video about that. So that'll be coming up. This wall is pretty much already sighted. We've got our mounting blocks in place for the sconce lights. We've got our Arlington in boxes. This is a very standard install where the flange of those boxes are really just right up against the sheathing and, and then I tape around them much like a window. In this particular house, we decided to do the HVAC rough in so we can tape around the vents and everything, but then electrical and plumbing are coming after siding, but I've got mounting blocks in place for everything so that after electrical and plumbing, we can take these mounting blocks off, properly flash everything with the liquid flash, and then put the mounting blocks back on. I like doing it that way because there's less risk of nails hitting pipes and wires. So I like to get all those nails in first when I'm doing a spec home. This wall is gonna be lap siding. The front is board and batten. So they've just got the four by eights up now. Battens will come later. The other side of the house here where I've got some more mounting blocks. So this spigot one, this mounting block will be just taken off after the pipe is through. We'll liquid flash that and put the mounting block right back on. In this case where the big panel is and also where the cable is, these are temporary mounting blocks. So these blocks will be taken off and then a permanent mounting block will be put back on after the wires are flashed. That permanent mounting block has the electrical connector already incorporated. This block here is for the water heater. This is where the two pipes will come out. I'm gonna let the plumbers drill exact location, but then after that, it's gonna be the same process where we take the block off, liquid flash, and put the block back on. We've got vents where that were already taped before the siding, and then they just sided around them. Another temporary mounting block. These, the HVAC lines were flashed with the big stretch tape. And then I like to put this black quick flash on as more of a cosmetic thing because the real flashing is behind that. While I'm outside, let me just talk real quick about the window install. Again, basic home, basic windows. And in this case, we're using a very small rain screen. It's this corrugated plastic. You guys have maybe have seen me use this before. We buy it in sheets and then cut the strips. It's about an eighth inch, maybe a little bit more, but 
Yeah, about an eighth, eighth inch thick. To have all the benefits of a rain screen, you really should go bigger. But on my spec homes, I go small because I'm making the job easier. We don't have to do anything special around the windows. We don't have to buck them out and uh, the trim is easy. For a spec home, we need to control how long it takes to do the job and how easy it is. Otherwise, we're not competitive. Uh, with pricing and that's the whole goal is to price these homes competitively even though that they incorporate high performance details now the window is since we don't have a big rain screen it really just gets installed in a very standard way where flanges go right up against the zip sheathing well of course we prep the opening first i'll show you that on the inside so opening is prep window goes on with the flange up against the sheathing and then we will tape we'll tape the sides and then the top and we'll go inside and talk about the rest of the install. Okay, we're inside now. Wanted to continue talking about the window install. And so before the window goes in, though, I had mentioned the opening gets prepped. The way that opening gets prepped is with zip tape that wraps into the inside all the way around. Of course, we're using the stretch tape on the corners. I also use the stretch tape on the top. A lot of people will think of that stretch tape on the corner being for water, that's exactly what it is for. But then my stretch tape on the top is so that I can totally complete my air barrier. Because once the window is in, and once the install the window, tape the sides like I showed on the outside, tape the top, that completes the outside. Then we come inside. My next step here, I'm gonna use Big Stretch. At my house, I tried the Prosico Air Dam. I'm gonna talk about how that went later. But my standard is to use the Big Stretch caulking to caulk the window window to the tape and I want to do that all the way around so that I am creating a seal and that's why I'm using stretch tape also at the top corners so that that seal is continuous and that is what completes the air barrier the way that I arrange the tapes on the outside is for water shedding and then the way that I am caulking on the inside and that caulking is tied in with the zip sheathing through the tape that is what completes the air barrier but it also is the back dam for water so if if water were to ever get beyond the flashing this caulking will be the back dam and that water will drain in the space that's beyond it and we'll be able to come to the sill and then out and of course we're not taping the bottom flange on the outside because that's where water gets let out so that's window install so by the way when i install a door my method of installing a door is exactly the same we prep the opening with stretch tape now on the bottom instead of zip stretch tape i'm using the siga ryzen tape that siga ryzen tape is already shaped like a corner it's a corner shape so i don't need to stretch it and it's rated to stick to concrete which is why i'm using it for the bottom corner and it comes inside and i will still do the big stretch but in this case i'm going to go three sides and then on the bottom i'm using a liquid flash uh, because it's a little bit more vulnerable spot and so this bead of liquid flash that I put here all the way across will be the back dam of this basically site-built door pan. But the whole thing about my site-built door pans is that they mimic the window install method. All right, so let's move on from windows and doors, talk about HVAC. You will see very similar features of this HVAC plan as what I have at my house, although I have a, a few more fancy things at my house. So first, I guess I'll just start in the middle. This is the little hallway. This is a small house, by the way, simple house. So whoever buys this is gonna really get, they're gonna get it. A well-built house is gonna be comfortable, super efficient. This house is 1388 square feet, I believe in the living. It's a three bedroom, two bath. The load on this house, because we're building tight, we have a good insulation strategy. Everything is within the conditioned space. We use the Bosch fully variable system as, as a standard. So. The load, the load on this house was like 0.8, not even one ton. And by the way, what I'm, the way I'm handling that, because normally you don't want to oversize too far. I think when you're using the fully variable system, the guidance when you do the manual S is that you don't want to oversize more than 30%. That's important because we don't want that system to run, running off and on. Actually, we do want it to run. We want it to be small enough to where it's running often. That's what keeps it energy efficient, but that's also what's keeping the air moving, filtered, and dehumidified. Now, in this particular case, this Bosch 
is, well, first of all, the, the smallest size they make is two ton, but that two ton has the capability to ramp down because it's using slightly different technology than most fully variable systems. It can ramp down all the way to 25% of its capacity. So this is kind of a unique system. And I think, you know, really it was important for me to find this system because if I hadn't found this system, I might be having to use like mini splits in this house. And that creates a whole other set of problems because then I don't have the benefit of filtering and dehumidifying and all that that I need from this bigger air handler and this bigger system. But this is a Bosch two ton, fully variable. It has the capability to ramp down all the way to 25% of its capacity. I'm gonna do a whole nother video just on that because um, I'm gonna be visiting the distributor where they have these in stock and we'll, we'll look at them and talk a little bit more in detail about those systems. But really an ideal system for this kind of a house with such a small load, we're able to, to do a fairly standard install without having to go to something special like mini splits. If I did mini splits, I would have to have other supplemental things. All right, so here's the return. We got one single return in the hallway, fairly centrally located. Here we've got, this is a transfer grill. So again, my, my attics are fully conditioned, not just partially or passively or whatever, but we've calculated it in the manual J. In this case, this attic needed two six inch ducts and I've placed them on opposite ends of the attic. Here's one supply and then the other supply is on the opposite end so that I am promoting that airflow all the way through the attic and then it gets returned through this transfer grill. This return is strategically placed next to the main return so that airflow is immediately being picked up and put through the system again. This other one that's connected to a 10 inch duct, that's my makeup there for the range hood. So every spec house we build is gonna have a range hood. Usually in the spec homes, I go with a 400 CFM hood. That's where it will connect eventually. This wire here is so that my range hood can talk to the makeup air. There'll be a flow switch on there, pressure switch. So when that senses the air moving through the duct, it will open up the damper, the makeup air damper. Usually I put them a little bit closer, but in this case, it's a small house. I feel like this is close enough and I wanted to utilize this strategy of dumping that outside air right next to the return. So again, I'm trying to pick up that air and condition it further. So right now I am using the Brone AI series as our standard ERV. If you didn't already know, using an ERV is standard, even in the cheapest of spec homes, because balance to ventilation is important, guys. It's important for the durability of the house so we're not depressurizing. It's sucking the outside air in through accidental holes. In my case, I don't have any accidental holes because everything is sealed on purpose, but that depressurization would cause other weird effects. And so we want this house to be balanced. So all of the exhausts are go through the ERV. So there, there is no traditional fart fans. Here is the master. There's two of them in here. We have one exhaust port in this bathroom, one exhaust port in that laundry, and I have one exhaust port in this master closet. Let me tell you why I do that because this master closet is right in the middle of the house and the manual J has no load, no load. If I put a supply duct in there, it would actually be too much air and make this closet too cold. So instead of putting a supply duct, we put this exhaust so that we are pulling the air out of here. And as it does that, it's pulling the air from the rest of the house in under the door so that we can exchange this air and keep the air moving. Well, that's it guys. I don't know if I covered everything. I did this video kind of spur of the moment, but I did it because this house is kind of an ideal place for a tour. And I wanted to go ahead and get that in before everything gets covered up. But those are the basics. Those are, in my opinion, the minimum that we should be doing on a home. So guys, when I wrapped up that property tour, at the end of it, I got kind of sidetracked and started talking about why I'm building that way to begin with. And I decided to make that a separate video because it's important. So go check that out if you haven't already seen it.